Ladies and mostly gentlemen, welcome back to Late Night Football. Today, we're talking about the NFC North, the greatest division of all time. Just kidding. I'm just a big fan myself because I'm a Lions fan. Let's dive into this thing. I got a whole breakdown today. I hope you guys are excited. Let me go through what we'll be talking about today. First, we got our best three free agency pickups, my top five draft picks, my offensive and defensive rookie of the year, division MVP, OMVP, and DMVP, the biggest game, the most pivotal game for this division, the winner, of course, because that's kind of important, and then I have a little segment that no one else really does. It's called playoff power, and if they make the playoffs, how much damage can they truly do and get that Lombardi trophy? Before we get started, not here, but right here, the Bootleg Podcast made a very similar video in the way they break this down. I love, so I adopted a lot of these things. Go check them out. They are amazing. Once again, right here, I link them right in the corner. They're doing a whole summer series like they usually do. Great people, great dudes. Go check the Bootleg Podcast out. Now let's dive into this thing. Before we go through all these accolades that I mentioned above, let's go through each team and deep dive just a little bit, okay? Their scenario, everybody's got a different spot, obviously. Let's start at the top at the Minnesota Vikings. So the Vikings, as we know, they're in a weird spot, okay? As a team, they are on the right track. They got a good head coach. They got solid talent around the roster. They got the best receiver in the NFL. That's kind of a big deal and just extended that guy. The story for the Vikings is, will J.J. McCarthy be successful? I struggle to find a path in this division. Let me explain myself. The Bears, I'm a Lions fan. The Bears are looking good. We know that for sure. The Packers are good. They proved themselves last year. They took down the Cowboys on the road, and they are a very young upcoming team with a young star quarterback as well. The Lions, never said this in my life, the Lions are good. I've never seen it before, and I'm very impressed. Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have been doing their thing. This year they should be very, very good as well, if not a little bit better. So you got those three teams that are all firing on all cylinders. They're looking pretty good. Chicago's going to be the big pivotal move there. Who's going to be better, Chicago or Minnesota? That is where I see J.J. having a little bit of a struggle bus. You have to play six games a year against these three teams, and they're all talented, and they're all young, and they're not going anywhere. Can J.J. overcome that? I don't know. He didn't really overcome it in college because he had a very good run game and a very good defense, and only had to make plays happen when it was absolutely necessary. Maybe that means he's more ready for the situation, and I'm overblowing this, but... I'd be very curious to see how this plays out. I don't think they have the wrong guys in the building. I just think it's the wrong timing and the wrong division for this team. That is my two cents. That is my POV. Let's go to the next team, the Green Bay Packers. So last year, it was a quarterback question at large. Is Jordan Love the guy? And we all kind of dismiss it now because it's clear he's, he's pretty damn good. Nobody knew. Matter of fact, a lot of Packers fans I knew were betting against this guy. And I can tell you my personal self. I didn't see Jordan Love working out like he did. A, how crazy is it they have Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and Jordan Love? I know it's only been one year success, but still, what a back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. They just keep hitting out the park. Two, he struggled to start. He did. He didn't look great. He showed flashes here and there and flashes of doo-doo, but we didn't see it come together until late in the year. When it came together, man, he looked special, and he finished the year on top and having a great, great season. Jordan Love looked great. The Packers are young. They have a super young wide receiver core in Watson, Reed, Dubs, and even Wicks. They're all great players. So they have a great young core of talent offensive players and all across the board. Because that's just how the Packers roll, man. They draft well. They execute well. They're going to be good for a while. And as a Lions fan, a little bit concerned. But we know they're going to be good. How much damage can they do this year, though? How much better will they be than last year? Because last year... Clearly, you're taking on the Cowboys on the road. You're doing something right. So how much of a step do they take this year? They're definitely a force to be reckoned with. Watch out for the Packers, the Chicago Bears. The Bears. Oh, man, oh, man, the Bears. Caleb Williams and Romo Dunze at nine overall. How how did the Bears get Rome? How? It just keeps happening. We saw, like, Twitter videos of these two, like, shooting the shit and being friends, and everyone's kind of joking. I'd be crazy if this happened. It happened. Romo Dunes, a Chicago Bear. And the base of this team is set very, very nicely. They got some defensive players. They got they got some offensive players, clearly. Their wide receiver core. This is the best part of them all. Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Rome Odunze. That 
is a wideout core. There better always be three wide receivers in the field at all times. And even better, Keenan Allen is going to teach Romo Dunze everything he needs to know. Those two players have similar strengths, and Keenan keeps producing. After 11 years on the Chargers, this guy just has not let up. He's having better years than he had in the middle of his career, in his prime, but his prime just keeps going. So clearly he's skilled and clearly he's talented. He's going to teach Rome some things, and I think it's going to be extremely beneficial for Rome's career as a whole. But the Bears' main question is, they got a new quarterback who's supposed to be the prophecy, and they got this great wide receiver core and some talented pieces around that. How far can they go this year? In a tough division with some tough teams, can they make the playoffs? Can they go even farther? Can they get a win or two? Can they go all the way? No, they're not going all the way. The Bears have a bright future, without a doubt, like the majority of these teams in the NFC North. Now let's turn the page to the Lions. This team has taken a complete 180 from the Matt Patricia era. I've never seen any team so down bad, so sad, and so lifeless. It is a new day and age. The Lions' biggest weakness in 2023 was their cornerback room. Clearly, Cam Sutton did some horrendous things, not only on the field, but off the field. Not even a laughing matter. That's serious stuff. How dare you, Cam? As the Lions' biggest weakness and the biggest thing holding them back and honestly keeping them from a Super Bowl, if they had good cornerbacks last year, they are in the big game. It was addressed in the draft. Taron Arnold, I don't know how they got him. They traded up, obviously. But he slid all the way down the board. The Lions snagged him with a trade with the Cowboys. And they also got Ennis Rakestraw Jr. The Lions organization from top to bottom, they kept all their coaches. Ben Johnson stayed. Aaron Glenn stayed. This is a complete program. This will be the best Lions team I've witnessed in my lifetime. How far do they go? As far as they want to. And that's my honest answer. Now let's dive into my accolades for this year. My predictions on who's going to win these awards across the board. My top three free agency pickups throughout the free agency period. Let's do this thing. First, we got Josh Jacobs, DJ Reader, and then Keenan Allen acquired via trade. So these players, will give you my two cents on them super quick. Josh Jacobs going to the Packers, a very talented running back. He's not elite. He's not the best in the league, but he's definitely not below average. This guy can get it done. He can make some stuff happen. And he signs with the Packers. This is an upgrade for that running back group and that running back core from Aaron Jones. Good move on their part. like that signing a lot. Next, we got DJ Reader for the Detroit Lions. The Lions already had Aline McNeil, who is a solid piece in the front. But DJ Reader is top 15, top 12, maybe top 10 D tackle in the league. He changed the game for this Detroit Lions defense. And now you got DJ McNeil, Hutchinson, Good God, you can go Pascal or whatever edge piece you want on the edge, NASCAR package, wherever you want to set it up on third down. Good pickup right there in DJ Reader. And then finally, we got Keenan Allen, the most important and best trade slash signing in my opinion. Keenan from the Chargers has produced his entire career. He knows what he's doing. One, a great scenario for your new rookie quarterback to step into. He's got a guy you know is going to be consistent and ready to go. And two, he offsets like a yin and yang to DJ Moore just perfectly. DJ Moore, a little bit more of a yak guy. Keenan Allen gets the hell open. That is his job. That's what he does. So perfect offset balance right there. And then Romo Dunze, third, he's going to have a guy to learn from. Keenan Allen, they have similar skills. I mentioned this earlier, but very beneficial for the entire Bears organization. What a great signing in Keenan Allen. What a great trade right there. I think they got him for a third or something like that. Don't quote me on it. But what a great move for the Bears organization. I don't care what they paid. Great pickup on their part. Next, we got our top five draft picks for the NFC North. And let's go through this thing. First, we got Rome Odunze. Next, we got Dallas Turner, Caleb Williams, Terion Arnold, and Marshawn Lloyd. Those are my top five draft picks. Let's briefly go through these. So one... Romo Dunze, outside of like the top five, six picks of the draft this year, Romo Dunze was the most surefire thing in that draft. He is a great dude, A, and then B, just a very talented, great wide receiver with lots of skill. He's going to get it done. Love that pickup for the Bears and to pair him with Caleb Williams for time to come. Next, we got Dallas Turner. The Vikings picked this dude up in the back of the first round. They traded up for him. Great move on their part. You get top of the first round talent on that D-line for a later pick in the first. Great, great move for the Minnesota Vikings. Next, we got Caleb Williams. Do I even have to explain this? We know he's got the talent, and the ceiling is beyond the roof. It's probably the moon. Hopefully, he puts it all together and does great things there in Chicago. Next, we have Terion Arnold. The exact answer 
the Lions needed in their cornerback room. What a great pickup right there. And then finally, Marshawn Lloyd, kind of my flyer right here. I love this running back, man. I've looked through all of them throughout the 2024 draft. He was my dude. That was Initially, he was ranked low, believe it or not. And then throughout the process, he, brought higher, he got brought higher and higher and higher. Loved Marshawn Lloyd. The Packers got him. As soon as Josh Jacobs, who's becoming an older back, he's a lot of carries on him, starts showing signs of regression. Because he will. He's just I think he's a great dude and very talented, but he's getting older. He's got a lot of carries on him. Marshawn Lloyd will take that backfield. It will be time. It'll be Marshawn time, and he's going to do a great, great job. Love him as a prospect. Let's go to my It's Time for the Awards, the Rookie, Offensive Rookie of the Year, and the Defensive, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Let's do this thing, y'all. For Offensive Rookie of the Year, I got Caleb Williams, obviously, at a USC. And then second for my Defensive Rookie of the Year, we got Tarion Arnold on the Detroit Lions. Let's break it down. Caleb Williams, very good quarterback. We know this. How good will he be? I have no idea. What I do know is that it would be a battle on offense, to be honest. It's going to be Rome, Caleb, I would say McCarthy, but he has an upfield battle. He's got the best wideout in America to throw to, but it is an upfield battle regardless. Caleb, the NFL wants him to be great. He's going to be great. I also think he's got the talent to be great. Caleb's going to be the offensive rookie of the year. Enough talking about it. We know what's going to happen. Next, we have Taron Arnold on the Detroit Lions. He will be stepping into a role where his name will be called consistently. And for that alone, I think it's a very, very high chance to be the defensive rookie of the year in the NFC North. He is going to be a starter. He's going to be paired against very good wideouts week in and week out. The path is there for Tarion. Is he going to be good enough? We will find out. I believe he will. And if so, he will be the defensive rookie of the year for the NFC North. Next is division MVP, OMVP, and DMVP time. At the top, you already know, it's my guy, Jared Goff, JG, for the Lions. Next, for the OMVP, we got Jordan Love on the Green Bay Packers. And finally, Aiden Hutchinson, the DMVP for the NFC North. Let's start at the bottom with Aiden Hutchinson, the defensive player of the year for the NFC North. In Aiden's first two years, he has done nothing but produce. Let me read you these stats. In two years, he has had four interceptions. Does he play on the D-line? I guess not. Four interceptions. Three forced fumbles, four fumble recoveries, 21 sacks, 23 TFLs, and 48 QB hits, 33 alone last year. He gets it done. He is a great all-around player, not just a pass rusher. He can also play great in the run game. Aiden's got talent, and we know that. And I think year three will be his best one yet because the Lions will count on him consistently to get it done. Aiden, welcome. You are the DMVP for the NFC North. Next, we have Jordan Love, my OMVP for the NFC North, let's break it down. First two years behind Aaron Rodgers, when he played, did not look good. We both know that. Going into last year, big question mark. We were going to know by Thanksgiving whether or not he was the guy. Quickly, we figured out Jordan can play. This guy put up a great year three, 4,100 yards, 32 touchdowns, and 11 interceptions. Just straight up balled out. Big year for Jordan Love, and I think he's going to do it again this year. And then to wrap this section up, we have our MVP, Jared Goff. Now, Jared Goff usually gets a lot of slander, a little bit of hate. It is backed off in this past year, obviously because of the year the Lions had. He had a couple games, A, against Matthew Stafford, okay, at home. You go against the guy they traded you away for. Big deal, at least for him mentally, I imagine. He beats him at home, does his thing. And on the year, this is what he's done in the past two years. Averaged 4,500 yards a year. Averaged 30 touchdowns. Average 10 interceptions. He's done a great job. He's just played good football. He's not making Patrick Mahomes types of throws. But Jared Goff has been consistently performing week in and week out. The dude is balling out. He looks great. And I think he will do it again in this next year. Good things for Jared to come. And then finally for our next section, we have the biggest game, the most pivotal game to our entire NFC North all year long. And that game is going to be week 14 Packers at the Lions. These are the best two teams, in my opinion, in the NFC North. This matchup right here will be pivotal to the top of the NFC North and who takes it. Because the Lions, let me read you this off. After this game, the Lions play the Bills. Bills are no joke. They play them at home. Next, they play the Bears on the road. The Bears have young talent and can easily sneak one away from us. Next, the 49ers. Oh, goodness. A rematch of last year's NFC Championship. That's going to be a great game and probably a loss. Just calling it what it is. The 49ers are a great team. And then finally, the Vikings, who are also no joke, 
Those are five hard games to end the year. And if you include the Bears the week before as well, that's six hard games in a row. That Packers game is pivotal. That is a clear, direct change in the standings. Who will win the NFC North? Who potentially gets that bye week? That is what this game could mean for this division. Huge game week 14, Packers at the Lions. That is my favorite matchup of the year. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the division winner of the NFC North is going to be the Motor City Kitties, the Detroit Lions. While I am a big fan, and you all know this, this is bias aside. The Lions are a well-rounded team from the top to the bottom, from the GM to the coaching staff, offensive, defensive coordinator, all the way throughout the bottom. Our biggest weakness in the cornerback room has been addressed through young talent and a trade there as well. This could be, not maybe not the year, but this could be the year. The Lions got talent all around the board and a great culture in that building. I've never seen anything like it as a Lions fan. Just like last year, the Lions are for real, and they're going to try to make their mark this year. That is why Ben Johnson stayed, and I am looking forward to it as a fan. Now, finally, a little bit different what I do here. It's called playoff power. I rank this system from 1 to 5. 1, you were good enough to make the playoffs. 5, you should win the Super Bowl. 3 is like a contender. 4 is you're pretty favored as well. A very good team all around. You get the idea. Let's dive straight into this thing. The Bears get to kick this thing off. I gave the Bears... A 1 out of 5 on my power score. The Bears are young. They need to see if Caleb develops and what he's supposed to be. And Romo Dunes is going to take a year, I think, maybe a year and a half to really step into fruition and what he should be as well. And the Bears as a team are not as well-rounded as some of these teams like the Packers and the Lions. But the Bears got real talent. They are coming. Their time will come, but it's not this year. But they certainly have talent to make some noise in the playoffs if they want to. Next, we got the Packers. I gave them a playoff score of 3 out of 5. That's a very good score. These dudes can ball. They beat the Cowboys on the road last year. I think they're only going to get better because they're young. Love is going to take a step forward. That whole wide receiver core is going to take a step forward. They could be something special, maybe even higher than a three potentially. That's where I have them right now. The Packers will be a real force in the playoffs. And finally, I have the Detroit Lions at a score of four out of five. They're not five. They haven't been in the Super Bowl before, so I'm not going to make them a favorite, obviously. And I think they're missing a Patrick Mahomes to put them at a five, if that makes sense. Jared Goff, very good quarterback, gets the shit done. He does what he needs to do. but He's not going to be the elite, over-the-top quarterback you need to just carry your team all the way. We know he's not that. He can win games for you, but he's not going to take you all the way by himself. Luckily for him, he's got a great team around him. And that is my playoff power score. So to wrap this up, the Lions, I gave a four. The Packers, I gave a three. The Bears, I gave a one. And the Vikings, because they're young and they're developing. And that is my breakdown of the NFC North, my winners being the Detroit Lions. And before you go, I must mention, not here, but right here, the Bootleg Podcast has great videos all summer long. Usually they do division breakdowns. This year they're doing every single team in the NFL. Go check it out right here. I'm going to tag them up here in the corner. Great people, great dudes, and know their shit when it comes to football. Check them out for sure. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. It helps me out tremendously and helps the algorithm out a ton as well. I will be breaking down every single division in the NFL all summer long. So if you want more content just like this, subscribe down right here, right below. I appreciate y'all more than you know. It's been a month. Missed y'all. It's good to be back. I'm excited for the next one. We'll probably do like the NFC. Well, how's it go? Never eat soggy waffles. So where to go? North. East, South, West, never eat soggy waffles. I'll see you guys. NFC East will be the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace.